Infectious diseases spread rapidly through healthcare facilities. Understanding how to care for yourself and prevent the spread of infection can slow the spread of illness within the facility and prevent you from taking the illness home. We will briefly discuss the signs and symptoms of six infectious diseases that are present in care settings and that can also impact your life outside of work. Transmission of these diseases can be stopped or slowed by following precautions like wearing appropriate PPE, paying close attention to hand hygiene, and changing your clothes upon returning from work. Influenza, or flu, is one of the many contagious diseases you will encounter in your career as a CNA. Influenza kills tens of thousands of Americans each year, but we don't always give it the level of consideration it deserves. Influenza is particularly dangerous for anyone with a compromised immune system, including the elderly, young children, pregnant women, and anyone with a compromised immune system, including those receiving treatment for cancer. You may fall into one of the high-risk categories mentioned or live with someone in those categories, and it is very important that you stay healthy and don't bring influenza to the vulnerable people in your life. In order to prevent influenza, you need to understand more about the disease. Influenza is a viral infection transmitted through infectious droplets. Many illnesses mimic flu and the symptoms are fairly generic. Symptoms include fever, chills, dry cough, aches and pains, headache, and less frequently, sore throat, congestion, and GI issues. Luckily, there is a rapid test for flu. If you or a patient is a suspect case, you can be tested to see if you have contracted the virus. You will be asked to follow both standard and droplet precaution protocols when working with influenza patients. Follow the directions for donning and doffing PPE, masking, and equipment disposal and cleaning. A vaccination is available each year for flu and at most pharmacies, big box stores, and health clinics. Unfortunately, you need to be immunized against flu each year because the virus quickly mutates and you should be immunized in early fall before flu season begins. In addition to following precautions and getting immunized, consider changing your clothing and showering as soon as you return home. Germs cling to your clothing and can be unknowingly transferred to surfaces and family members in your home, leading to potential contamination and infection. Tonsillitis or pharyngitis is something you may not encounter frequently if you primarily work with elderly patients but it is something that you need to be aware of as a CNA. Bacterial tonsillitis or pharyngitis is often called strep throat. While relatively uncommon in adult patients, strep is highly contagious, spreading from person to person. Children ages five to 15 are at highest risk for contracting tonsillitis. Strep infections are the most common cause of bacterial sore throats in children, accounting for up to 30% of all sore throats in children. Following safety precautions at work will help prevent you from bringing the bacteria home to your family. Tonsillitis requires only standard precautions. CNAs and other healthcare workers should practice proper hand hygiene. You need to wash your hands for at least 20 seconds with soap and water between patients, wear gloves, and follow hand hygiene protocols for alcohol-based hand sanitizers. Only standard precautions are required when dealing with patients with tonsillitis. Infection can be confirmed with a rapid test or a throat culture. If a patient is diagnosed with a strep infection, they will need to start an antibiotic regimen and follow it as directed. Patients are not considered contagious after 24 hours of antibiotic use and can return to normal activity. The patient should continue to follow standard precautions even after being medicated for at least 24 hours. Symptoms of tonsillitis in adults can be mild or severe. The most common symptoms are sudden onset of sore throat, pain when swallowing, and swollen tonsils. Symptoms are more pronounced in children. They may experience a headache, fever, GI symptoms, including vomiting, enlarged lymph nodes, and full body rash. Preventing the spread of infection depends on following standard precaution protocol, staying home when sick, completing your antibiotic regimen if prescribed, and practicing hand hygiene and respiratory etiquette. Preventing the spread of infection from your work to your home starts with you. Tuberculosis, or TB, 
is a bacterial respiratory infection that can last years. TB is relatively hard to contract without prolonged contact with an infected individual, but as a CNA, you regularly have prolonged contact with your patients. Your facility has a TB prevention plan in place. You may interact with patients who spend time in a negative pressure room or encounter patients who are participating in directly observed therapy, DOT, where they are observed taking medication for months at a time. TB spreads through suspended droplets in the air. You cannot catch TB by touching your patients, so you need to breathe the bacteria in to become infected. Most people are not infected with TB after a single exposure. It typically requires repeated exposure over a prolonged period for infection to occur. This is why most people spread TB to people they spend significant periods of time with, like family, co-workers, or other residents in a care facility. As a CNA, the best preventative measure is to correctly wear PPE, including an N95 respirator. N95 respirators prevent disease particles from reaching you. If you think you have been exposed to TB, or start developing any symptoms, notify your provider right away. Your provider will likely order a TB skin test or a TB blood test to determine if you have contracted the disease. Your employer likely requires annual TB skin tests. Make sure to keep up with those requirements and follow up with a second test if your results are questionable. If you notice any new changes in your patient's health, please report them to your supervisor immediately. They may be a symptom of a larger issue. Some symptoms of TB include a persistent cough that does not improve, weakness, fatigue, and loss of appetite. Patients may have some or all of these symptoms. Skin infections are common ailments in long-term care facilities. Many residents cannot effectively communicate when a skin infection occurs. As a CNA, you may notice scratch marks or changes in your patient's skin during the normal course of your job. If you see any new changes in your patient's skin or comfort level, report them to a supervisor immediately. These may be a symptom of another issue. There are many different skin infections, each with different causes and symptoms, but we will limit our focus to just one, MRSA. MRSA, or methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus, is a skin infection caused by staph infection and occurs both in healthcare settings and out in the wider world. MRSA can be dangerous for people of all ages, making it dangerous for you to take home to your contacts. MRSA infections can occur at wound sites. Limit your direct contact with patient wound sites regardless of MRSA status. Wear gloves and wash hands carefully after any contact with patient wounds. If your patient has a known case of MRSA, consider using dedicated patient care equipment that does not leave the patient room. This reduces the risk of transmitting the infection to other patients via contaminated equipment. If you need to use the same equipment for patients, thoroughly clean and disinfect items between each patient. Finally, avoid sharing personal items with coworkers and patients. MRSA requires standard, transmission-based, and contact precautions. Follow all precautions carefully. MRSA looks different in each patient but there are several symptoms that can be concerning. This includes any changes in wounds, including new swelling, changes in wound color, temperature, or drainage. Patients experiencing wound changes may also develop a fever. These symptoms need to be addressed immediately. Preventing the spread of MRSA is vitally important. One way to do it is by changing clothes as soon as you return home. MRSA may find its way to your clothing and then come off on items at home. Changing your clothes immediately reduces the risk for contamination. If you can't change your clothes, at least thoroughly wash your hands. Hand hygiene can reduce your risk for contracting a myriad of illnesses. Keep all your wounds clean and covered. Never have open wounds at work and try and reduce wound exposure during your personal hours. Exposing open wounds to the world increases your chances of contracting MRSA. Finally, if you notice any changes in your wounds or those you care for, contact a healthcare provider immediately. Vaccine preventable illnesses, or VBIs, are occurring at a higher rate now. Many of these illnesses are caused by people opting out of vaccinations for themselves or their children. As a healthcare provider, you have a responsibility to educate yourself on the vaccines 
and do your best to protect yourself, your family, and your patients from illness. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention publish updated vaccine schedules each year. Consult the age-specific annual schedule and compare with your immunization record. Contact your healthcare provider for an updated version of your immunization record. There are several vaccines that you may need to get annually, flu and COVID-19. Consult your provider to see how many doses you need each year. Other vaccines, including Tdap, commonly referred to as a tetanus shot, may need to be re-administered throughout adulthood. Consult your healthcare provider for more information on the vaccines you need to update. The most common GI illnesses in long-term care facilities are norovirus and C. diff. Norovirus is a viral infection that spreads quickly. It includes vomiting, diarrhea, nausea, etc. This is what we often think of as the stomach flu. It isn't caused by the influenza virus, but it is uncomfortable. People with GI illness face an increased risk for weight loss and dehydration. As the CNA, you need to keep a close watch on the GI health of your patients. If patients exhibit unusual behaviors, including loss of appetite, loss of interest in drinking, or lethargy, more medical intervention may be needed. Report anything unusual to a supervisor. If you develop symptoms of illness, use soap and water to wash hands, avoid direct contact with fecal matter, and continue drinking liquids to avoid dehydration. Correctly identifying infectious disease is important to stopping or slowing disease transmission. When we think about the spread of disease, we use the terms endemic, outbreak, epidemic, and pandemic. There are subtle but important differences among these terms. Endemic disease refers to a level of a specific disease we expect to see in a population during a given time frame. Human populations are always susceptible to infections, but there are some that we expect to be present in certain populations and even during certain times of the year. Influenza is endemic in the human population. We expect there to be a certain number of cases of influenza in a population during flu season. When disease exceeds the boundaries that we expect in a certain population or area, it is considered an outbreak. Outbreaks are limited to a specific setting, like a long-term care facility. For example, we expect a certain number of strep infections in LTCF each year. For this purpose, let's say that number is 10. When a facility exceeds the expected number of cases of a given disease, an outbreak occurs. Epidemics occur when outbreaks grow to a larger geographic area or group of people. Epidemics are higher than expected occurrence of disease in a specific population. Epidemics are not limited to infectious disease. Any condition can be considered an epidemic if it exceeds the expected number of cases during a given time period for a specific location. Pandemics are something that most of us are familiar with. Pandemics involved exponential disease growth over a large area. Pandemics are not impacted by geographic or political borders. As we saw with COVID-19, disease spreads quickly to all the corners of the globe. International trade and travel make it possible to very quickly transport goods, services, and disease throughout the world. Let's look at these terms another way. Endemic disease occurs in an expected area in an expected number of people. The circle shows several small pink dots, all contained in the bottom half of the circle. Outbreaks are limited to a specific area, but the incidence is higher than expected. The pink dot is larger and has white ripples, indicating the possibility of disease spread to other groups and areas. Epidemics are similar to outbreaks, but on a larger scale. The disease is still limited to a relatively small area, but transmission has increased and the disease is spreading outside the original area. In the graphic, the white ripples are spreading the impact of disease outside the original cases, red, leading to additional cases with the same general group or area. Pandemics occur when a disease surpasses both the endemic and epidemic borders. The disease affects a large area and population. COVID-19 is the pandemic we are most familiar with. COVID-19 cases exceeded the origin region and the expected number of people infected. In this case, COVID-19 impacted people in each country, 
truly making it a global pandemic. In the case of the pandemic graphic, disease transmission is not limited to one area or group. Each group has many cases, leading to a ripple effect and additional infections and spread to a wider area.